As the program draws to a close, I would like to invite one of my newest relatives, Craig Foster AM, former Socceroo broadcaster, adjunct professor, author and human rights activist to the stage to present the vote of thanks. Thanks, Craig. Thank you, Philippa. You've been doing a marvellous job and I assure you that I won't leave the stage before I get one of those things, so you're not going to have to do two trips again because you've done some kilometres tonight. So, uh, hello everyone, it's lovely to be here. Uh, good evening all. Salam alaikum to all of our Muslim brothers and sisters, indeed. Uh, to all our uh, religious leaders, faith leaders in the room, thank you for being here. It's so important what you're doing here this evening. To Minister Lee, Sophie, who I know both of you have been big supporters of this event for many, many years, thank you very much. And to all of the dignitaries in the room, there's too many, of course, to mention. Touching on what uh, Tracy was saying, this is so important, what's happening in this room this evening. And whilst the energy level might rise a bit when a great Ennis Kander comes on, and that's what sport tends to do, uh, there's been a wonderful mood and energy and feeling in the room all night, as there always is at this event. And why is because when you look around, you see the true vision of what Australia is. You see more than that, actually, is the promise of what we can be. You see here, uh, an Australian secular society where everyone is free to exercise their own faith, to believe, to have their own beliefs and to be respected for doing so. But more than that, actually to come together, to sit together, to break bread together, or in this case, break fast, and to build understanding, as your cousin Ahmet would say, uh, to conduct dialogues. To us it's about conversations and it's about people-to-people -people connection. It's critically important because Australia and perhaps the world, but certainly this country has never needed it more than we do right now. I sit on the Australian Multicultural Council and so I'm called often to consider that word, multiculturalism. And you hear often in Australia that we're the most glorious multicultural uh, country in the world. We're certainly one of the most diverse and we're an extraordinary place with wonderful people. But what is multiculturalism? It's not just diversity, uh, it's not just inclusion, and it's not just saying that more than just tolerate other people or other faiths, we accept them. No, actually it's saying that we're better together. That's real multiculturalism, and that's the challenge for this country because we're not there yet, despite all of the you know, wonderful slogans that we love so much. We are better together. I grew up in a place called Lismore. It's an ex a beautiful place uh, in northern New South Wales. You might know it as very close to Lennox Head and Byron Bay and all the other wonderful uh, tourist places. But when I grew up, it was uh, far less multicultural than today, far less diverse than today. And walking as a young teenager into the world of football was a gift to my life. As if you reflect, which is what Ramadan is about, I hope that you'll accept it's a gift to yours. And when I watched the recent wonderful documentary by a film producer named Alec Morgan called Admission Impossible about Australia's immigration history, our troubled immigration history, actually, uh, it led me to understand very clearly that what is happening in this room and around the country has improved us as a people. It's a better country to live in because of the different colours that are in this room. It's a better signal to the world of what Australia desires to be. But Tracy rightly, in her brilliant speech tonight, challenged us to do more, to do something. And that, in the end, is what this is about tonight. Because let us all recognise that like many minority communities, minority in number, not in worth, of course, but like many minority communities, Muslim Australia has been attacked in recent decades in Australia. In fact, if you read the Scanlon Report, as we must with the Multicultural Council, it will tell you that they've felt in recent years marginalised, as though they don't, they're not welcome or belong in the way that I do, or as I've always felt. 
And that's not right. So what can we do when we walk out here? What we can resolve is to say, well, we're better together, which means like brothers and sisters, I'm obligated to stand up for you. It's not to say how wonderful it is, look at our wonderful tapestry of colours, no. It's to say this person next to me is part of this country, is equal to me, and I will fight for you when it's necessary. Last year, for that reason, I fasted during Ramadan as a non-Muslim. And the response from much of Australia was troubling. And yet, like so many people have said tonight, we've, we take hope and strength from these gatherings. And yet other Australians said, now that you've done that and you've told the story of Ramadan and explained and through your eyes I'm able to see something different in Muslim Australians, we're breaking down barriers. It doesn't seem so different to me now. Now I've gone and, and read some information about it. So these are small actions that we can all take to create a better country and the one that we all dreamt that Australia would be. You know, people say that I advocate for refugees. Actually, I just advocate for people. It just so happens the refugees at the moment in this country are one of the most uh, uh, persecuted people. So if we're all equal and if we're all human, as we so often say, what responsibility do we have then to step forward for other people? I would say it's profound and I would say, as I think uh, our representative on behalf of the Grand Mufti said this evening, our words and deeds should make others safe. Exactly. What words and deeds can we take out of here? We have many challenges in this country, this wonderful country. We have Indigenous children who are being incarcerated at age 10. I saw nine refugees last week in Darwin. I sat in front of three families. One, the parents were 63 and 58 years old. They've been locked up for eight years. That can't be right. That's not part of the mood here. That's not part of the messaging here. That's not part of inclusion. It's not part of diversity. But it should be what we're all about, in my view. There are many things that we need to improve here, but each of us must step forward to make sure that that happens. Spending time with uh, Muslim Australia has been a gift to me. Spending time with Reverend Bill Cruz and learning about his 12 lessons of life that he's about to publish has been wonderful in my life and that of my family as with so many other Australians, of faith and of none, all of whom just want to see people as equal. Can we please do that in Australia now? Can we just say that person there is exactly like me, different beliefs, doesn't matter, same rights, equally as worthy that we all are. I might finish with just one point because uh, Tracy, uh, mentioned the great Michael Slater. And I used to watch Slats, as he's known, who had a beautiful cover drive. Any cricket fans would well know here. He was a marvellous player, won many, many titles. He found himself locked in, uh, uh, abandoned really, in India, uh, being there uh, commentating on cricket. And in the last few days, he's been very public about that issue. And, and he has every right to feel abandoned by a country that uh, despite his citizenry, he says, you can't come home. But what's m perhaps most interesting, and I intend talking to him about it, is that those 11,000 Australians or Aust Indian Australians or uh, in India right now, and now all of our thoughts and prayers are with every Indian person and indeed in Nepal and other countries who are, uh, who are dealing in such a difficult manner with uh, COVID-19. Those 11,000 might be actually the first Australian refugees. Do you think? For two weeks, they're stateless, essentially. The beauty for Michael is that he has the means and the ability to go elsewhere for two weeks. I believe he went to the Maldives to, uh, to you know, recuperate and wait. He's fortunate that he can do that. Many can't. 
He also has a passport to be able to go there, which is a bonus. The difference with Michael is when this policy or this law comes down, he can come back to his own country. The difference with a refugee is they can't go home. The first Australian refugees. In COVID, we got locked down and all of us saw, saw society and need and want and vulnerability and obligation that we've talked about so much tonight. I hope in a very different way. Perhaps some of these, as bad as they are, can be a trigger to a better Australia. It starts here, but Tracy's right. It ends out there. Thank you for the opportunity to, to speak, Ahmet. Thank you to all of our wonderful musicians. Extraordinary. Philippa, you've done a marvellous job. To all of our speakers, uh, in particular Tracy, erudite, brilliant as usual, and it's been uh, wonderful to see your career go from strength to strength. You are an incredible uh, journalist and you're very much leading the world in, in, in that space. So to all of you, thank you for the opportunity. Ramadan Mubarak. <laughs>